be able to lead yourself before you can competently assume the responsibility to lead others. If you can manage yourself to the point where you are a concern to us, a concern to others, then you are not fit to lead other people. As a matter of fact, you don't necessarily need other people to be an effective leader. You can be a leading baker of cakes all by yourself. Everybody wants cakes in your community. It is you they look for. You can be a leading teacher without being a principal. To the point of being consulted by the principal on matters of importance at your school. You can be a leader in the church as an usher. I was an usher in my church and I was a leader. And at the time I was a constitutional court judge already. It was a joy. I wasn't trying to show up. It is something that the Lord had said I must do. I was enjoying it and I was leading without being a leader. It's important that we talk about leadership because there is a vacuum. A leadership vacuum in the world. In the business sector, in the religious sector, even in government circles. There is a vacuum, a leadership vacuum. There is a deep hunger for leadership. People are tired of self-seeking leaders. People who make empty promises. Promises never intended to be fulfilled at the time when they are made. But where do we begin? You've got to love God. We touched on the love of God earlier on. With all your heart, with all your mind, with all your, your, your strength, with all your soul. Because when you truly love God, when you are like David, a man after God's own heart, when a Goliath comes against your destiny and the destiny of your nation, your attitude will be, I will not allow this uncircumcised Philistine to insult my God like this. You will say, you come against me with a sword, a spear and a shield, but I come against you in the name of the Lord. You will remember those challenges that come against your nation, your continent. That this battle is not mine. It is the law. I'm only a vessel. And because I know that I enjoy the full backing of the Lord, I'm coming against you, Goliath, with a sling for that matter. Just so that after victory you will know. Everybody will know that it is not because of the kind of weapon I was using. It is because of the power of God behind me that I secured victory. It is that love for God that will cause you to assume the same position that was assumed by Joseph. When what many people would see as a golden opportunity... To experience what it means to sleep with your boss's wife, you would say, how can I do this wicked thing against the God I love? It is that love of God that will cause you to assume the position or the attitude of Mordecai, refusing to bow down to the prime minister of a nation where you are a born servant. That Mordecai was a machinkila. He was a gate man. A man of no consequence before, before the eyes of many. What they did not know was that he was a prime minister in the Meiji. He had to demonstrate his commitment to God so that God can take him from the gate to the prime ministerial office. You've got to love God. To You've got to love yourself. You've got to love your people. You've got to love that which you are doing. What am I talking about? David had to love the flock he was a shepherd of. 
in order for him to lead that flock well, in order for that experience of being a shepherd to be used effectively to shape his leadership capabilities. That is why when the bear rose against him, unlike many of us, he did not look for where to run to. He confronted the bear. He knew that he was in training. Somehow he must have been told by God, although it is not written here, that greatness awaits him for as long as he could surrender absolutely unto the Almighty God. So knowing who is behind him, knowing that he fulfills a leadership role, not for himself, but for the God that he loves, knowing that he was looking after the family asset without which they would have no means of survival, he said, bear, come here. And even when the lion came, he said, lion, came here. And with his bare hands, he tore it apart. That's what, uh, that's what 1 Samuel chapter 17 tells us. He didn't use any weapon, his bare hands. The bare hands of a 17-year-old, he tore it open. And when Goliath came, remember, this was preparation for the, for the full-blown manifestation of his leadership capabilities. When, the, when Goliath came, for 40 days, the word of God said, frustrating the people of God, even the king was trembling, even his elder brothers were trembling, the trained soldiers were trembling. The one who loved God and who had built a close relationship with the Most High God, the prayerful one, the one who was possessed by the word of God. The one who meditates on the word of God and praises God according to Psalm 119. Seven times a day. Confronted the one that nobody in that nation was prepared to confront. He appeared before the king. And was talking about uh, to the king about what is to be done. The king, oh, you haven't been trained. How can you confront this man? This is a mighty warrior. He said, he said, no, forget about that. I have a testimony. The God who made it possible for me to destroy the bear and the lion is the same God who will help me to secure victory against this Goliath. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine? The rest is history. Not only was Goliath destroyed, but so were the multitudes of the Philistines.